ladies and gentlemen. It indeed gives me great pleasure to be back here in New York at the Bloomberg Emerging and Frontier Forum. And thank you for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts with you all today. The topic of ensuring an energy transition that is just, affordable, and successful could not be more timely. Getting that transition right, in our view, is very critical. As the world faces the immediate needs of energy security and economic development, alongside the equally urgent needs to address climate change. While some see these as competing priorities, we in the United Arab Emirates believe that they are closely connected. If people's basic energy needs are not met, economic development slows down, and so does the climate action agenda. And if we underinvest in the energy system of today before the energy system of tomorrow is ready, we will only make matters worse. Let me be very specific. Globally, there are less than one and a half million barrels of spare oil capacity. That is simply less than 2% of global consumption. In a world where markets may face further disruption, that doesn't give us a lot of room to maneuver. In fact, it is a recipe for disaster. What we need is more of a recipe for progress. The fundamental challenges of the energy transition, in our view, are as, vo as follows. One, how to ensure economies move forward while putting the brakes on emissions, meaning our objective should be centered around stopping emissions. We should be after zero carbon. We shouldn't be after progress or economic development. That must continue. Two, how to maintain energy security and climate progress at the same time. And three, how to make sure that no one gets left behind. I believe we can, we must, and in fact, we have no other option but to solve these challenges all together at the same time. Before looking for solutions, we have to recognize that the current energy system is vast, it is complex, and multifaceted. And transitioning to a new energy system needs a system-wide response. It needs measured, realistic, practical, and sober planning. In short, we need a comprehensive, realistic strategy to keep the increase in global temperatures within 1.5 degrees while expanding access to accessible and affordable energy. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the first step of our strategy needs to be an honest, transparent, and comprehensive examination of the demand side of the energy system. The good news is the power sector is shifting rapidly to renewable energy sources. With wind and solar energy accounting for over 80% of all new power generating capacity last year, however, Hard to abate sectors that consume the most energy are still very reliant on conventional sources. Much more investment is needed in mitigation technologies and zero carbon energies that can effectively transition heavy industry, manufacturing, construction, transportation, as well as agriculture. The funding gap here is wide and it is important to understand the numbers. While global investment in renewable energy exceeded 365 billion US dollars last year, 
That's less than 5%. Less than 5% of that amount was invested in energy storage, carbon capture, and the hydrogen value chain. Honestly, this is just not enough. In fact, according to some industry estimates, the energy transition will require more than $200 trillion over the next 30 years. That's more than $6 trillion every year. Clearly, no single country or corporation or institution or organization can foot this bill. We need sensible regulation and tax incentives that stimulate private sector investment alongside concessional finance and substantial government funding. We need active, creative partnership across countries, businesses, and industries. And we need to recognize that while wind and solar energy is the fastest growing segment of the energy sector, it still only represents 4% of the entire energy mix. Therefore, as global energy demand continues to increase, we need to collectively and quickly decarbonize the existing energy sources that the world still heavily relies on. This is the balanced, practical, realistic, pragmatic approach we in the UAE are taking. We are a global energy player <clears throat> and fully, we are fully committed to the energy transition. As a regional leader in renewable energy, we have invested more than 50 billion US dollars over the last two decades in over 70 countries. And we will continue to invest another 50 billion US dollars in the years to come. We are home of the three largest and lowest cost solar plants in the world. In fact, we broke the record for the cheapest solar tariff in the world in 2020 at 1.35 cents per kilowatt hour. At the same time, we remain a reliable supplier of the least carbon-intensive hydrocarbons. We operate the only national oil company to source 100% of its grid electricity from zero-carbon nuclear and solar power. And using the latest technology, we aim to make each unit of production less carbon-intensive than the last unit. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, as COP27 approaches and as the UAE prepares to host COP28 in 2023, we see our role in the UAE as a consensus builder. We want to bring together all parts of the world and all segments of society to deliver a practical, workable set of solutions for accessible, affordable, and sustainable energy. Solutions that produce real results for the economy and for the climate at the same time. COP28 will include the first global stock take since the Paris Agreement. A detailed analysis of the gaps between global ambition and current realities. Delivering a just energy transition will be central to addressing these gaps. Success depends on adopting the latest technologies to drive down the emissions of the energies we use today, while we create the energies of tomorrow. Success means leaving no one behind and making progress and prosperity available to all, not just for a few. And success requires a comprehensive approach that includes all the stakeholders who can affect the outcome, in particular, those who know the energy industry. Because at the end of the day, the energy transition represents the most complex capital intensive engineering projects in history. That is a fact and no one can deny it. 
and no one knows more about delivering complex capital-intensive engineering projects than those executives in the energy industry. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to achieve a just energy transition, we need to be practical. We need more realism about the scale of the challenge and more optimism about our capacity to solve it. If we prepare carefully and plan correctly, we can rise to the triple challenge of climate progress, energy security, and economic prosperity. We can bridge the gap between ambition and action, rhetoric and results, and we can deliver the truly resilient, sustainable development for all. Thank you.